Hey everyone and welcome back to my channel Suburban Sill. So today um, I'm just going to talk a little bit about some of the more elusive alocasia, one in particular, um, the alocasia pink dragon. So back in October I was at the nursery and I saw a table full of alocasia and one looked extra special to me because it had these really pink um, stems and I thought I recognized it as a pink dragon but I wasn't sure because all the alocasia were just marked alocasia which is what happens a lot of time and so I decided just to throw caution to the wind and I bought it it was like $15 which is probably more than I usually spend on plants and I brought it home to do a little research and digging to see if I had indeed found one of these rarer alocasia that you just you just don't see them for sale very often. They're not the typical plant that you find at the nursery. Um, so I reached out to some plant friends online, um, did some comparison with my own alocasia poly. So you'll see there's a lot of similarities between the two. Um, if you look at them just on face value, the leaf shape is kind of similar um, and has that arrow leaf shape. If you look underneath the leaves, you'll see there's um, kind of a difference in kind of the veining on the back of the leaves and the color is a little different as well. Um, the leaf shape is a little different. There's a ribbing on the poly where um, the pink dragon is smooth. But other than that, it's kind of hard to tell because sometimes on the poly, um, it's, it'll have pink stems if it's a newer leaf. Um, it's kind of hard to tell the difference. but. Through my research, after I talked to some friends online, I confirmed that it was indeed an alocasia pink dragon. Super exciting, right? Right. So one thing I've learned about taking care of plants is that when you bring them home from the nursery, there's a good chance that they will never look the same ever again. That's because your house, at least my house, is not conducive to nursery type conditions. So it takes a while for your plant to adjust to its new conditions. Um, for example, when I got my pink dragon, it was dripping water from its leaves, almost like sweating, which is a process called gutation, gutation, something like that, where the leaves, um, where it kind of like pushes out water through its leaves, I think. Um, and so that was a really interesting lesson. But shortly after I got the pink dragon, it dropped all of its leaves in a very sad display of death of some sort. Now, chances are I didn't water it enough because they really need like an evenly moist soil. They like a lot of humidity. It was October. Um, my house is not. Um, very humid it's actually more on the dry side but after um, it dropped from all of its leaves it had one really big leaf and I you know sometimes at that point I get frustrated and I just like throw it away I'm like I killed it it's done I throw it away but this time I decided to stick it out and I'm really glad that I did so a tip for you alocasia lovers an alocasia is kind of like a bulb type plant, right? And like bulbs, they kind of come and go. So they'll put out leaves and then they'll die back and then they'll put out new leaves, um, which is exactly what my pink dragon did. So here's my pink dragon today. This is the leaf that I've had um, that stayed all winter. And now I have um, this new leaf coming on the back. I have two little ones on the bottom. Like this entire stem was just dead. You can even see, I didn't want to pull that leaf off because I was afraid that like, I don't know, I was going to damage it or something. Um, and I even have another new leaf coming off the back of this one. So my beautiful pink dragon, I thought I'd killed it, I didn't. And so for any frustrated alocasia lover, plant owner, keep with it. They do come back. I also had a Zebrina at one point um, that continually died for me and um, it ended up not working out. Sometimes it doesn't work out and maybe I just got frustrated, but um, same thing, a leaf would die back 
and a new one would come out. You could lose all the leaves and it could still bring forth another leaf with proper care. So I'll show you a little bit my alocasia poly. So here's my alocasia poly. I've had this plant for probably three years. The most I've ever gotten for leaves, leaves, the most I've ever gotten for leaves is probably five at one time. And that was this summer. It was like doing its best, right? Well, over winter, at the same time my pink dragon shed its leaves, I started to have these problems with my poly leaves. This is what happens when you don't water your alocasia properly. They need an evenly moist soil. I mean, don't get me wrong, they can dry it a little bit, but it's not good. And when they get dry, they kind of go into like a dormant state. They stop putting out new growth. So if you have an alocasia, it's not putting out new growth, you're probably not watering it enough. So give it water. They don't even need like super bright light. Mine doesn't sit in a super, it doesn't have direct light or anything. It just gets um, a nice little cascade of, of light, a little shimmering. Um, but really, um, it doesn't require a ton of direct sunlight. But all these leaves, all my leaves on my alocasia also died. And then now all of a sudden I've got two new leaves. One really big one, actually. Look at that. And then another little one over here. But aren't, isn't that fun? To, um, even though, frust I should say frustrating fun, because you think you killed it, and then all of a sudden it totally comes back to life. So thanks for checking out this video. I just wanted to do a quick talk about um, discovering rare plants, taking care of rare plants, taking care of alocasia, and um, some of their needs. Um, for more information, visit my website, suburbansill.com, where I have some um, pink dragon care tips, as well as some other just general alocasia care tips. And um, follow me on social media, at suburbansill. And uh, stay tuned for some other fun and informative videos that I will have coming up in the next few weeks. So thanks for stopping by and we'll see you next time.